As you might know, I shoot mostly bird and other wildlife species. And for this, for years, I have been using mainly my EF 600mm f4 as my long prime lens and then a 70 to 200 2.8 as a shorter zoom lens, just in case the animals were a bit less shy, I could approach them a bit closer or I wanted to include a bit more of the environment. However, with the 70 to 200, I sometimes struggled because it was still a bit too short or sometimes just the background blur was not nice enough for my taste. So I was at some point even considering buying a 300mm f2.8, um, which would be another prime lens, so not as flexible as a 70 to 200, but it would give me a nicer background blur. In the end, I didn't do it because for once <laughs> it's a bit expensive. Uh, the second thing, it's also quite large, so it's a bit hard to fit this and the 600mm in my backpack for a bit lar longer tours where I also need additional lenses and maybe some clothes, some food and so on. Additionally, I also thought it might be worth waiting if Canon announces an updated version, like an RF 300mm 2.8, that might be a bit more compact and a bit uh, lighter. And now Canon announced something really interesting, the RF 100-300mm f 2.8 lens. So this means you have a constant aperture of 2.8 over the whole zoom range. And in this video, I just want to share a bit my thoughts as a wildlife photographer about the announcement of this lens and whether I'm considering buying one or not. And stay tuned until the very end of the video because then I will talk a bit about the R5 firmware update that we got a few weeks ago. So let's start with the specs. Uh, as the name suggests, it's a 100 to 300 millimeter lens. It has no integrated teleconverter, like for example the old EF 200 to 400 millimeter f4 did, but it's compatible with both the 1.4 and the 2.0 RF tele extenders. And I think this is quite nice, especially with the 1.4, you get like a 140 to um, 420 millimeter f4 lens. If you watched my recent video about the Nikon uh, 600mm f4 with integrated teleconverter, you know that I really love this feature and for me it was the most impressive feature of the whole lens. So would I have liked to see one here? On, of, from one side of course yes, on the other hand I also think that um, it's a significantly smaller lens than the 600mm f4, so adding an integrated teleconverter that can be switched on and off will be, um, like, uh, relatively speaking, a bigger change to the lens than on an already big 600mm f4. So, therefore, I think maybe it makes sense to not do it. And the second thing is, it's already a zoom lens. It already has a zoom range from 100 to 300mm. And I still think that uh, integrated teleconverters that can be switched on and off are more interesting for prime lenses where you really otherwise have no, change, uh, no way to change the focal length. The lens has a dual nano autofocus system which I guess will be mostly interesting if you use a Canon R3. And of course it comes with optical image stabilization like basically all uh, telephoto lenses nowadays do and it promises up to 5.5 stops with the optical image stabilization alone and if you couple it with the camera that has in-body image stabilization, the IBIS, like the R6, R6 Mark II, R5, R7, R3 and so on, um, then you get up to 6 stops. So the difference with and without IBIS is not huge and we have seen this in the past. It's just a fact that um, the IBIS works best with wide angle lenses and for telephoto lenses it's still a nice improvement but there the optical image stabilizer is just much more important. The lens has a minimum focal distance of uh, 1.8 meters for all focal lengths. So if you zoom all the way to 300 millimeter, you get a maximum magnification of 0.16. And that's a value that is like more typical for super telephoto lenses. For me, this is usually not a big problem if I shoot birds or other wildlife because 1.8 meters is still close enough and I don't need this huge magnification. However, if you also use it sometimes to take pictures of amphibians, dragonflies, butterflies, then maybe you would be better off with 100 to 500 or you can just use the 100 to 300 and throw in the 1.4 or 2 times tele extender. Obviously then you also get a much better magnification. As an L lens it's obviously weather sealed. It has the typical uh, switches like not only AF, MF but you also have a focus limiter. So either the full range or 6 meters to infinity. Um, you have a fo redesigned focus set, focus recall 
uh, switch. I'm very curious how this will perform in the field. You have the lens function buttons um, and then you also have the control ring, of course the manual focus ring and the zoom ring in the lens. So one very important point, how big and how heavy is the lens? It's 12.8 uh, centimeters in diameter and 32.2 centimeters in length and it weighs about 2.65 kilograms, which is around 5.8 pounds, which is a bit heavier than the old EF 300 millimeter F 2.8. But we need to consider this is a zoom lens, so it's much more flexible. And I think for the flexibility you gain, the bit extra weight is, is worth it, for my opinion. But of course, that's up to you to decide. Finally, also not completely irrelevant, the lens costs around 9,500 US dollars, so significantly more expensive than 100 to 500 or 70 to 200. It's clearly more in the range of the outgoing 300 2.8 or a 400 2.8 that we have from Canon. You might now wonder, what do I think about the, this lens? Will I Am I interested in it? Of course, in a way I'm interested, but there are some things like that the price is quite high. And the second problem that might be even a bigger problem than the price is the size and to a lesser degree the weight. Um, let me explain a bit because it's per se not a heavy lens. But if I do wildlife photography, I usually take my 600 millimeter lens with the R5 and on the second R5 a smaller lens like the 100 to 500 or 70 to 200. These fit quite well in my f-stop tilopa backpack um, and can go on tours with this. And now if I would take the 600 mm f4 and the 100 to 300, I mean, I could not try how well they fit in my backpack because I don't have the lens, but just imagining it, I think this would not really fit. I would not need to take my bigger backpack and on the f-stop shin and on a bit bigger tours, on larger tours where I hike more and also need to take the tent, some extra clothes and so on. This one is already full. So yeah, I just think from from my style of shooting where I also walk a bit, having this rather big lens as a secondary lens would just be too much. But there's also situations where I would love to use it. For example, if I go in the mountains and take pictures of Ibex, the 600 millimeter is usually too much. And there I was for years taking the 70 to 200, now I take the 100 to 500 as a second lens. Um, and I've been hesitating about leaving the 600 millimeter at home altogether because it's too much focal length in many situations. And here the 100 to 300 would, I think, be almost the ideal lens. I could just take this, not take the 100 to 500, not the 600, and I would save so much weight and probably have tons of fun. And if there's suddenly a bird appearing or a chamois that is a bit shyer, I still have the options to put in the 1.4 or even the two point extender and then get at 600 millimeter f5.6, which should still give me a nice, much nicer background rendition than the 100 to 500 millimeter lens. And I've been in similar scenarios when I was taking pictures of um, squirrels and nutcrackers that there the 600 millimeter was just too much. With the 70 to 200, the background blur was not so nice. And here I was a bit jealous about co colleagues. Like um, in winter, I was uh, taking pictures with Danny Connor and she had the 300 millimeter 2.8, which just seemed a so much better lens for the situation than my 600 millimeter F4. So yes, the lens is definitely interesting, but it would not be my main lens. And for not being my main lens, it's quite expensive. I hope that I can maybe try it a bit and then make up my mind. As mentioned in the beginning, I quickly want to talk about the R5 firmware update that we received a few weeks ago. So from the rumor sites, there were some big words about the pre-burst, new AF functions, um, uh, less uh, limitations for video or more features for video. And basically none of this was true. The only thing we got was a su uh, super resolution feature with 400 megapixel, but JPEG only. And it really works if you have nothing moving, like even moving water is too much. So for me as a nature photographer, even when doing landscapes, this is not really useful. Um, for wildlife, I don't want, even want to talk about it. I don't mind that this feature is there. If some people are happy about it, that's great. But I would be so happy if Canon would just update the rest because I have the feeling the R6 Mark II is now in many ways a bit ahead of the R5. And since there is no R5 Mark II around the corner, or at least it doesn't seem like, it would be cool if we would get something like this via firmware update. That's it for today. Let me know what you think about the lens and see you in the next video.